Hello world, this is Mike with Backwards Machining. Just wanted to give you guys a, a what's up on basically how to run a treadmill motor. Now I know there, there's different kinds out there and a couple years ago I ended up going through a, a couple of issues trying to get one of these running. Um, now this one here is a 2.9 horsepower 130 volt uh, treadmill motor. It has 8,000 RPMs. Now, uh, the safest, most practical way to run this, to, to run the treadmill motors, is to use one of these. These are from the factory, the treadmill uh, boards. Now, Essentially, all you have to do is, this is where your uh, potentiometer goes. This is your AC input. And this is your motor output. So, AC in motor out and potentiometer here to control the speed that's it no nothing else to fiddle with and you have yourself a nice uh, circuit board you could even if you have a 3d printer you could print yourself a nice uh, case like i have here for one of the other regulators i built uh i forget the person who designed the boxes but i'll, I'll try to put that in the link um, again, this is the easiest and the safest. If you if you can't do that for for some reason, um, you could always do the transformer rectifier uh, method. Now, the reason they suggest using a transformer is basically for isolation. You could always run power direct out of the wall into a rectifier. And 9 out of 10, if you ask somebody, they're going to suggest against it, saying there needs to be some kind of isolation. Now, this transformer is a microwave transformer. What I did was I took the secondary out, and I put in another primary from a different transformer. As you can see over here, I've been robbing transformers from microwaves for far too long. So I've, I've gotten myself quite a supply. Now using the transformer method, what you want to do usually um, is use a nice good size bridge rectifier and try to heat sink it somehow. I, I ended up just putting it on top of the uh, the pan but I'm not I wasn't anticipating running anything heavy duty through this also you're gonna want a capacitor to try to filter some of the DC output it'll help it helps raise the voltage um, a lot actually it's a good 30 uh, I want to say 35 to 38 percent so if you have 120 volts coming out of the wall you, you add essentially 40% to that, and that's what your voltage will become. Uh, now, this is what I have off of my transformer here. That's 154 volts DC. Just using a microwave transformer and a, a tiny capacitor. Now, I'm, I'm going to end up beefing up that capacitor uh, probably to a bank maybe uh, eight of them just to, for easier starting on one of these but it's not necessary it will run it as is in fact it, it runs it just fine now the other option oh, let me unplug that hold on the other option you have is this um, this is one of those 2000 watt SCRs 
that you can get from China. Basically, it, it takes an alternating current and allows you to adjust the, the frequency of it. <clears throat> now, what I did was I ran this out into a voltage rec rectifier, and then I ran two outputs in the back. One's DC, one's AC, so I could use either or. If I want to plug this into a fan or a drill press or a bench grinder, then I can control the speed that way. Or if I want to plug it into something DC, essentially it's the same thing. Obviously not both at the same time. I mean, it's it's not that powerful. But it does the trick. Um, again, this would be great for light duty. Not something I'd recommend, um, you know, to, to run a big machine. But again, th this is another method of trying to run a high voltage DC motor. Um, and it works, it works good. Like I said, I, I do, I have run it and it works fine. All in all, again, I recommend using the factory model. If you can't, then I recommend doing this method. Um, works great. I've never had a problem with it. Plenty of power, doesn't overheat. Uh, the big thing is just make sure when you put together the transformer, um, I re-TIG welded it so it's sealed and solid. When I plug it in, there's a very, very little hum. You know, if yours is vibrating and humming like crazy, odds are you might need to redo it. Just something to keep in mind. Now, I've been, I've been doing this with a lot of transformers, and I, I've never really run into any issues. Let me show you one of the other ones I've been building. This transformer is actually out of a welder. The reason I ended up doing this, one of the builds I'm going to do eventually, is I'm going to convert a 3D printer into an EDM machine. Well, a CNC EDM machine. And I wanted this for the power supply. I needed something heavy duty and I know this will do the trick. Just to give you a little perspective on motor size, this is a 5 horsepower Baldor 3400 RPM motor. And wait till you see the next behemoth. Well, there you go. <laughs> Look at the size of that motor. Now that is a General Electric, I want to say 3 horsepower, but it's only a 900 RPM motor thing is absolutely massive just massive but whether you're running this this or this the concept is the same you need one of these or one of those or one of those even if you have to wind it yourself it's a little bit of trial and error to it or just buy one. You can buy them on uh, Amazon or eBay. Look up transformers. <coughs> um, they're not that expensive. Well, I mean, depending on what you get, they, they can get expensive. But most people have junk microwaves laying around. Um, again, you need to be extremely careful when dealing with this stuff. Um, you should have knowledge of electricity when doing any of this. So that's just my take, and hopefully if I can help anybody out there uh, with this video, I hope, uh, I hope I did. Like I said, I, I struggled for a couple of years trying to get through this stuff, and I did. I, I made it, but it was interesting. But all right, have a good one, guys. Catch you later.